Hello, this is Leslie Taylor, the Profitability Strategist, and on this week's vlog, I will be discussing saving in your business. How much should you save? Now, last week in my last vlog from last week, I discussed uh, the very first step in setting up your business to be its most profitable. A very simple step, right? I'm, I'm all about starting simply. This doesn't have to be super complex. But I get a lot of questions about this, like from a lot of people in terms of, you know, where exactly do you start? Now, have you ever wondered about saving in your business? Um, I'm sure you've heard on the personal side of things, right, about emergency funds and rainy day funds in case of an emergency. But as far as business, what does that look like? How do you get started? How do you figure out how much to save? Now, I'm sure you may be wondering those questions, and if you are, that's what I'm going to be talking about today. I'm going to be answering all those questions on today's blog. Blog. Vlog. I've recently switched from a blog to a vlog. Anyway, I'll be answering all those questions and giving you some guidelines around how much to save, a few tips on how to get started, and how to do so really easily. Now, first, I'd like to approach this from the, you know, what is this for and why do I need to do this standpoint? This helps us determine how much you're gonna to need to sock away if you understand the why behind it, that's gonna give it all more meaning. So that's the approach I'm gonna take. So number one, or the very first reason why you wanna do this is of course for emergencies. Now, last year I had the privilege of buying a brand new computer less than a year from purchasing a brand new computer the previous year. Now, obviously I did not plan to buy a new computer <laughs> that soon, it was unexpected. It was an unexpected expense. And so, yes, I could get it fixed, but it was going to take like five to 10 days. Uh-uh. My business stops without my computer, and I bet yours does too. We can't survive without them. But the fact is, these unexpected things, they happen. And in order for us to be able to navigate them and not have them totally devastate our businesses and our finances and just you know take us all the way out of business, if we have money saved up, then we can more easily weather these types of unexpected expenses or whatever may happen, when they happen, not if they happen. So think about you know, what could break or go wrong in your business that you really depend on. How much might it cost to fix it or to replace it? Now, I'm not suggesting that you have to have enough to weather you know, multiple years of a pandemic, although that is nice. Um, but what I am suggesting is having some savings in your business, it gives you margin. Margin buys you time. It gives you time to figure out what to do next um, so that you can keep your business going. Now, the second reason is non-recurring expenses. Non-recurring expenses are things like renewing your business license and renewing your, your yearly memberships and subscriptions. Anything that does not occur every month. Now, these, these types of expenses are, are considered non-recurring. Now, while the smaller non-recurring expenses, they may be no big deal to your cash flow, it's the larger ones that can really limit your cash, which could mean difficulty covering the other expenses that you have or running out of cash or having to rely on really expensive debt. So having cash saved helps you cover those expenses more easily versus finding yourself in a bind cash-wise. Now, these can be easily planned for, right? You know they're going to come up. So one way to handle them as you plan for the year and you do your, your, your yearly profitability plan um, or profitability roadmap, as I like to call it, it's a budget. As you plan, keep those expenses in mind. So what I suggest is that you add them up and then you divide them by 12. And what that tells you is it tells you how much money you can stash aside in a savings account so that you know that when those bills come due, you can cover them, right? Or it also just says, you know, I know what this amount is every year and I've got that much saved up. So I know I, know I can, can, you know, cover those expenses. So either way, taking note of what all those expenses are, adding them up, and just being aware of what those are and when they're going to hit so that they don't um, disrupt your business. Now, next, number three is taxes. Nobody likes to be surprised by taxes, but the fact is taxes sometimes surprise folks because 
maybe the year goes differently than they planned or they forget about taxes. Um, they come every year, but some people do forget about taxes, especially when it comes to, you know, owning a business. Now, perhaps your business became wildly successful in the last year um, or the last quarter. Congratulations, but maybe you hadn't planned for that tax-wise. So there is the opportunity for many of us to pay estimated taxes, right? So that we can pay some of the taxes that we anticipate we're going to owe. Speak with your tax professional about whether paying estimated taxes is right for your situation. As well, ask them if it's a good idea for you to set aside and how much you might want to set aside money for taxes, period. Of course, it's a good idea to stay in touch with your financial professionals and your tax professional should you have any major changes in your business that includes your revenue or anything else because it could change the amount that you owe. So talking to them sooner than later is a good thing. So it's great when your business is a success, but keep those folks informed because success can come with added, you know, with added expenses as far as taxes go. Now, number four is droughts. Businesses have highs, but they also have lows. Even when a business experiences a low period, certain bills still have to get paid, right? Those monthly subscriptions, the rent, business insurance, if you have employees, they have salaries. Again, as with the case of the unexpected, money saved buys you time. So maybe it's time to figure out how to bring in more revenue or shift your business to serve um, a different or a different market need or a different market altogether. That's what money saved will do for you. Number five is growth opportunities. Before you consider putting it, putting it all on a credit card or financing it um, in some other way, having savings might enable you to not have to reach for financing or not get as much financing um, if you need a loan. Now, I will stop to say this. Some businesses are going to require some level of financing. That's just the nature, right? They, there, is, there is such a large amount that is needed. They're going to need some type of financing or investment. So I get that. Now, if you need a loan or need financing, having cash in the bank that you saved, it can look better. It shows that you can save and manage your money better. Um, maybe the investors want to see you invest a portion and have some skin in the game, right? Um, it could improve your chances of actually receiving the financing. So that is something to consider. So how do you get started? Well, I suggest you set up a separate savings account. If you don't already have one, set up a savings account. Um, if you do have one, you might set up, you might consider setting up a separate savings account just for um, some of these specific areas that I've talked about, whether it be taxes, whether it be um, growth opportunities, things like that. It's up to you, you know your business. But it's all right to start small, however, and just start with one. Consider automating the transfer of the money each month, either transferring a set dollar amount or a percentage. Now, before we go further, I want to talk about percentages because I love percentages and this is why. Now, depending on your business model and how your business is structured, many businesses, your revenue every month, it's up and down, it's up and down. So if you transfer a set amount, in those down months, your cash flow is gonna be a little tighter. So that's what I love about percentages. They take that into account and allow you to still have, you know, some wiggle room and flexibility. Consider saving between three to six months of your monthly expenses. And it's really gonna depend on your business, right? We already talked about, um, you know, those, those non-recurring expenses. What do those total up to in your business? You know what that looks like. You can calculate that easily. Um, also, it'll depend on the complexity of your business, right? If it's more complex, you might wanna be closer to six or more months of savings. Complex means maybe you have employees you have to pay, fixed assets that you need, you know, loans, things that you need to pay off and pay down. Um, you know how much debt you have. Maybe you're renting a retail space. There's, you know, inventory, materials. If you just have high monthly expenses, these are all things you want to consider when you figure out that number, that target um, savings numbers. These are just a few suggestions to get you started. Now, remember, start small. Just start. 
I hope you enjoyed this vlog and I would love to hear what you think of my new format as I've, as I've you know, made the transition from a blog to a vlog. You can email us at info at ltaylorassociates.com. Stay profitable.